This video is an introduction to personal planning. It is called What is Your Pathway to Personal Planning? And it is copyright to the NIDAS Personal Planning Resource Center and Registry. The information is based on legislation in the province of British Columbia as of September 2011. NIDAS is a non-profit charitable organization serving the province of British Columbia. NIDAS was established in 1995 by citizens and community groups to provide information and facilitation with personal planning. NIDAS promotes personal planning as an alternative to adult guardianship. NIDAS also operates a centralized registry for planning documents. NIDAS is the Latin term for nest, a symbol of support and safety. This presentation provides basic information. It is not legal advice. The photos used in this presentation are of models. The examples do not relate to them in any way. NIDAS uses a self-help approach to personal planning. It is your responsibility to determine what you need. NIDAS makes every effort to provide accurate and up-to-date information. However, laws change and different interpretations may affect meanings. What is personal planning? Personal planning is different from estate planning. Personal planning is about making arrangements for while you are alive. Estate planning is about making arrangements for after your death. The way you do personal planning is different from the approach to estate planning. People often approach estate planning, making a will, as a private activity between you and your legal professional. Personal planning requires a different approach. If you are going to appoint someone to assist you with managing your affairs, you need to involve them in the process. They need to learn about their role and their duties and about your wishes. What life areas does personal planning cover? Health care, personal care, legal affairs, and financial affairs. Who is personal planning for? In British Columbia, personal planning is for all adults 19 years and older. People take different paths to personal planning depending on their situation. There are laws that apply to adults who need help today with making decisions and managing their affairs and adults who want to plan for the future. Which legal documents are available for personal planning? This presentation covers three legal documents, Representation Agreement Section 7, Representation Agreement Section 9, and the Enduring Power of Attorney. In British Columbia, the laws governing these documents say that every adult is presumed capable until it is shown they are not. The laws also say that the way an adult communicates does not prevent them from being considered capable of making a legal document. People communicate in a variety of ways. However, each document has a different requirement or test of incapability. This is one of the factors that determines your path. Each of the documents also cover different areas of authority, another factor in determining your path. Let's look at an example. John and Mary want to get their affairs in order. Mary has dementia. Mary requires considerable support from John with managing her affairs and making decisions. Mary needs help today. John wants to plan for the future. Let's follow their paths to personal planning. Which path will Mary take? Mary needs help today. 
she may make a representation agreement with Section 7 standard powers. Let's learn more about the representation agreement Section 7. What is the test of incapability? What roles and duties are involved? What areas of authority does it cover? Under Section 7, there is no specific test of incapability you have to meet. The law says you may make an agreement under Section 7 even if you cannot manage your own affairs. For example, Mary may make this type of agreement even if she cannot make other types of legal documents such as an enduring power of attorney or a will and even if she does not communicate clearly or even verbally and even if she is involuntarily committed under the Mental Health Act. A representation agreement with Section 7 standard powers looks at incapability capability differently than other laws. It says that all relevant factors must be considered when looking at whether an adult is incapable or capable. For example, does the adult communicate their choices and preferences and express feelings of approval and disapproval of others? While Mary's verbal communication may be affected by dementia, she communicates in many other ways, including through her behavior, which makes her capable of expressing her choices and preferences and feelings of approval and disapproval of others. Another factor that has to be considered is, is the relationship between the adult, Mary, and her representative, John, characterized by trust. And presumably there are many people who could attest to this. These factors are not requirements or criteria. They are factors to consider in looking at Mary's capability. What roles are involved in a representation agreement? There are three roles available in a representation agreement. Representative the person who has legal authority to assist you to make decisions or if necessary to make decisions on your behalf. Alternate representative who is a backup in case your representative is not available and the monitor a safeguard and support. A monitor tries to ensure the agreement is working for you. The law says no one can prevent the monitor from contacting you and that's a safeguard. What are the duties of a representative? The first duty of a representative is to help you make your own decisions. And when acting on your behalf, a representative must check with you about your current wishes and they must follow your wishes and preferences not their own. What areas of authority are covered under Section 7? Under health care and personal care, we have minor and major health care, which includes medications, tests, surgery, dental work, kidney dialysis, end-of-life comfort care. And under personal care, it includes living arrangements, diet, participating in activities, spiritual matters, personal safety. Under legal affairs and routine finances, it says a representative can obtain legal services and instruct a lawyer. Your representative might need to settle an insurance claim, go to small claims court for you. And under routine finances, they may need to help you deal with banking, income tax, government benefits, your RRSP, investments, insurance renewals, motor vehicles, homeowner grant, change of address. 
If routine finances are included in the agreement, an extra safeguard is required. You can meet this safeguard by naming two or more representatives and requiring that they must act together for finances, or you can name someone in the agreement as a monitor. The extra safeguard requirement is not necessary if the representative is your spouse. However, if you name an alternate in the agreement, then an extra safeguard is needed when the alternate moves up to act as the representative. The path for adults who need help today may lead to a representation agreement with Section 7 standard powers. What path will John take? John is on the path to planning for the future. He will make two documents, a representation agreement with Section 9 broader health and personal care powers, and for financial and legal affairs, he will choose between the enduring power of attorney or the representation agreement with Section 7 routine finances. Let's learn more about the representation agreement with Section 9 broader health and personal care powers. What is the test of incapability? What areas of authority does it cover? Under the representation agreement Section 9, there is a specific test of incapability. You are considered incapable if you do not understand the type of powers or areas of authority covered under Section 9 and the consequences of giving these powers to a representative. The areas of authority covered under Section 9 are the same standard health and personal care powers as in Section 7, which you will remember, minor and major health care and personal care, and broader or non-standard health and personal care powers. For example, refusing life support, that is having the final say even if the medical team or family members disagree, consent to treatment with no known benefit, and restraining, moving, or managing you even if you object. Those are considered broader or non-standard health and personal care powers. Under Section 9, it also covers giving your representative the legal authority to make arrangements for the temporary care and education of your minor children or other dependents. With Section 9, you have the opportunity to give your representative the broadest authority possible for health care and personal care, so there are no gaps in your plan. If there are gaps in your plan, then other procedures and authorities will determine how decisions are made. For financial and legal affairs, John will choose between the enduring power of attorney and the representation agreement section 7 for routine finances. Let's learn more about these documents. What are the tests of incapability? What roles and duties are involved? What areas of authority do they each cover? As we've discussed, under the Representation Agreement Section 7, there is no specific test of incapability that you have to meet. The law says you may make an agreement under Section 7 even if you cannot manage your own affairs. The Enduring Power of Attorney, however, lists six specific items that you must understand to be considered capable of making an enduring power of attorney. Let's look at the next slide. 
Here are the six items that you must understand. The property you have and its approximate value, the obligations you owe to your dependents, you must understand that your attorney will be able to do on your behalf anything in respect to property that you could do if capable except make a will subject to the conditions and restrictions set out in the enduring power of attorney document. You must understand that unless the attorney manages your business and property prudently their value may decline you must understand that the attorney might misuse their authority and understand that you may, if capable, revoke or cancel the enduring power of attorney. There are different roles and duties for the two documents. As we've already discussed, the representation agreement has three roles representative, alternate representative, and the monitor, a safeguard and support. The duty of your representative is that he or she must follow your wishes and preferences. The enduring power of attorney has two roles, the attorney and alternate attorney. And the law says the duty of your attorney is to do what he or she thinks is best to protect your finances. And they can take into account your wishes and values and give priority to meeting your health and personal care needs. Let's look at the areas of authority. The enduring power of attorney has the broadest coverage. We've already looked at the coverage under Representation Agreement Section 7, obtaining legal services and instructing a lawyer. Your representative would be able to settle an insurance claim, go to small claims court on your behalf, for example, and under routine finances, deal with banking, income tax, government benefits, your RRSP, investments according to the Trustee Act, insurance renewals, motor vehicles, homeowner grant, change of address. The enduring power of attorney includes the same financial and legal powers covered by the representation agreement and some additional ones, including dealing with real estate matters, acting on your behalf as an officer or director of a corporation you own or serve on, permitting your finances to be used for the benefit of others, for example, your spouse or relatives, and customizing authority for managing your investments. You remember that under the representation agreement, investments must be managed according to the Trustee Act. You can customize that in your enduring power of attorney. However, both documents have extra requirements. As discussed earlier, an extra safeguard is required if routine finances are included in the representation agreement, and this is met by naming a monitor or naming two or more representatives to act together for finances. For the enduring power of attorney, the law says if your attorney might need to use the enduring power of attorney document to deal with your real estate, the Land Title Act requires that your enduring power of attorney must be signed by a lawyer or a notary public, and that's called officer certification. So the path for adults planning for the future may lead to these two documents. For health care and personal care, the representation agreement with Section 9 broader powers. And for legal and financial affairs, the enduring power of attorney. Or, depending on what needs to be covered, the path may lead to a different document for finances. So the same document representation agreement with Section 9 for health and 
care and personal care, but for legal and financial affairs, you could make the representation agreement with Section 7 Routine Finances. And of course, adults planning for the future have the option of making a representation agreement with Section 7 standard powers. Let's review. Which legal document fits for you? You need to determine if you are on the path for today or the future, and then consider what areas you need to cover. As we've discussed, Mary needs help today, and she will make the representation agreement with Section 7 standard powers. John is on the path to planning for the future, and he will make two documents, the representation agreement with Section 9, broader health and personal care powers, and for financial and legal affairs, he will choose between the enduring power of attorney or the representation agreement with Section 7 routine finances, depending on what he needs to cover. Where do I get the forms and what are the legal requirements? Well, for representation agreement forms, the, the representation agreement Section 7 and Section 9, you are not required to consult with a legal professional to make a representation agreement. NIDIS provides common standard forms for free and they're available on the website and we've made them available through other community groups. NIDIS can also provide customized forms through our self-help program or you can go to a lawyer or a notary public. For the Enduring Power of Attorney form, most people will go to a lawyer or a notary public. And if your Enduring Power of Attorney might have to be used to deal with real estate matters, as we've discussed, the land title requires that it be signed by a lawyer or a notary public. To find a lawyer, you can contact the Lawyer Referral Service, 604-687-3221, Six six three one nine one nine. To find a notary public near you, call six zero four six eight one four five one six, or one eight hundred six six three zero three four three, or visit the website www.notaries.bc.ca. Let's look at some frequently asked questions. What if Mary owns real estate, but she is incapable of making an enduring power of attorney? If the real estate needs to be sold, someone would have to hire a lawyer and apply to the BC Supreme Court to become Mary's comité of estate or guardian. The procedure is expensive and takes three to four months. If John is appointed, he will have to report to the public guardian and trustee about how he is managing Mary's financial affairs. However, perhaps the real estate does not have to be sold at this time. And in the meantime, the representation agreement with routine finances will allow John to help Mary with her financial and legal affairs. If John does not own real estate and decides to make the representation agreement Section 7 for finances, can he combine it with the Section 9 for health and personal care in one document? No, this is not recommended. While it is technically possible to combine Section 7 and Section 9 in one document, it is not practical to do so because of different signing requirements. John will make two separate documents. What if something changes that affects my legal document? 
While circumstances and relationships change, most people will make more than one version of their legal documents over their lifetime. The law sets out procedures for revoking, cancelling your legal document. Making a new one does not automatically revoke your previous one. Most people make a new document rather than making changes on their existing document because it becomes messy and confusing. And the law also provides procedures for how people you appoint may resign. NIDIS has fact sheets on all of these topics. Where do I register my document? After completing your legal documents, you can register them with the NIDIS Personal Planning Registry so they are available when needed. The Personal Planning Registry is a voluntary registry, just like the Wills Registry. The registry fees are $25 to register your first document and $10 to register additional documents. The fees are paid at the time of registration. You can go to www.nidus.ca forward slash registry to obtain the registration forms. We've talked about resources. The first step in personal planning is to get informed and have discussions with those who may be involved. The NIDIS website has fact sheets, videos and stories with more details to help you become informed. Go to www.nidus.ca. You can sign up for the online NIDIS newsletter to stay informed of new resources and tips, changes to the law and other developments. See the button on the NIDIS website homepage at the top right. You can make a tax-deductible donation to NIDIS to help with awareness, education, and facilitation of personal planning. See the Donate Now button on the website or mail a check to NIDIS at 411 Dunsmere Street, Vancouver, BC, V6B as in Bob, 1X4 and we will mail you a tax receipt for your donation. Let family, friends and professionals in your network know about personal planning and the resources on the NIDIS website. NIDIS thanks the Notary Foundation of British Columbia for the project grant to produce this public legal education presentation. Please note that due to a number of factors, including the downturn in the economy, NIDIS, like many other nonprofits, has very limited resources. This means NIDIS does not have personnel to answer the phone. We rely on modest fees for service to pay for our day-to-day -day operations. And the only way NIDIS can currently share its expertise is through the website email and other online methods. We know this is not accessible to some and we regret that. You can help by spreading the word about personal planning to your family and friends. We hope that you've learned more about personal planning and we invite you to visit the website for more resources www.nidus.ca